your home is a medallion home. A home where all these feature, full house power, light for living, modern electric appliances, and electric heating and cooling are part of the construction and part of the bargain. In the 1950s, General Electric and Westinghouse ran a multi-million dollar campaign to promote the sales of electric appliances and push homeowners towards all-electric homes. The National Electric Manufacturers Association launched the Medallion Homes Campaign. They awarded emblems to houses that solely used electricity for heat, light and power. The house had to have an electric range, electric refrigerator and an electric water heater. You could also choose an electric dishwasher, food waste disposal, clothes dryer or air conditioner. They specified the number of outlets and switches per linear foot of wall space. If your house met all these requirements, you were given a 3-inch brass plaque emblazoned with the Live Better Electrically or LBE logo. It's as easy as can be when you live better electrically. The LBE campaign marketed natural gas and coal as outdated and dirty sources of energy. People were encouraged to stop using their coal-burning furnaces in basements and switch to electric fireplaces. The ironic thing is that the electricity powering these medallion homes was generated at coal-burning power plants. It wasn't clean in any way. It was a marketing scheme to sell new gadgets. Unfortunately, technology hadn't caught up with the all-electric home concept yet, so most of these appliances were very inefficient. People soon abandoned them and opted for natural gas instead. Fast forward 70 years and we're seeing another push towards all-electric homes. They're being touted as the clean, high-performance choice of the future. There are many differences this time round, though. A significant portion of electricity is generated from renewable energy, like solar and wind power. I'm not going to call them green or clean. They're renewable sources. Technology has also made huge strides since the 1970s. Induction stovetops are solid competitors to gas stovetops, both in price and performance. Electric heat pumps, which move heat rather than create it, are gaining popularity because they are energy efficient and can save money in the long run. Electric tankless water heaters are also becoming popular. In 2015, approximately 25% of all homes in the US were electric, 45% in the South, 18% in the West, 15% in the Midwest, and 8% in the Northeast. I was completely sold on all-electric homes when we finally get around to building our custom home. I wanted it to be a modest, energy-efficient, low-maintenance structure. However, after going through the storm in Dallas last week and all the blackouts, I've done a complete 180 and I don't want to rely on a single source of power anymore. It's just a knee-jerk reaction, but my experience and the story about the medallion homes makes me a little wary about buying into the all-electric marketing push. We see marketing cycles like these in every industry. Take milk, for example. In my lifetime, I've been told that cow milk is great for you, it builds stronger bones, oh no, wait, stop drinking cow milk and switch to soy milk, oh, soy milk is terrible for women, switch to almond milk, now switch to oat milk. Is it just a matter of time before we go full circle to cow milk? I'm not directly comparing milk marketing to energy marketing. I'm just pointing out the mixed messages and the marketing cycles to sell more products and appliances. A lot of these are the result of valid scientific research, which I respect and follow. But we have to make individual decisions based on our experiences and what works best for us, not on what's trendy right now. We also shouldn't demonize people for bucking the trend and doing what is best for them. Anyway, let's go over some pros and cons of all-electric homes. Some of the pros are improved indoor air quality. An all-electric home has no risk of carbon monoxide poisoning, high carbon dioxide levels, or natural gas leaks. There's also a lower likelihood of fires in all-electric homes. Electric appliances like induction stovetops are comparable to gas-powered appliances in terms of performance and cost. Heat pumps are actually three to five times more efficient than old electric and natural gas options. There's also no connection fee to natural gas infrastructure. An all-electric home is the only feasible path to zero carbon or carbon neutral homes, 
which produce as much energy as it uses. It can also reduce our consumption of natural gas, which is extracted through fracking. Fracking-related activities have been blamed for tremors and earthquakes in North Texas. Some of the disadvantages are complete reliance on the state's infrastructure, which can fail as we saw last week. Many homes also install solar panels under a PPA or solar power purchase agreement. A third party installs and pays for a solar energy system on a customer's property at little to no cost. This is a grid-tight system with no battery backup. Any excess energy is sold to the grid. This is a problem when the grid shuts down during a blackout because you can't use your solar panels to power your home. I'm going to get sentimental now. There is something about the warmth and appearance of a wood-burning fireplace that a much more efficient electric fireplace cannot match. An innate primal instinct draws people in. I also dislike the idea of selling electric homes as clean and green and labeling all other homes as dirty, just like they did in the 1950s. It's a marketing scheme that pushes people to shame fossil fuels instead of learning to appreciate them and all the good that they have done for our civilization. We absolutely need to tackle pollution and climate change that has resulted from the use of fossil fuels, but we need to approach it with more level-headedness. If your electric home runs on power generated at a natural gas power plant, it's not as green as it's marketed, just like those coal-powered homes in the 1950s. That being said, you can choose a renewable energy-only electric package. I'm also beginning to realize the value of a backup generator and those usually run on natural gas, diesel or propane. The last point I'm going to make is the value of diversification. Like the saying goes, don't put all your eggs in one basket. During our blackout, the only appliance that worked was our natural gas water heater. If we had a wood-burning fireplace, diesel generator or a gas stovetop, the situation would have been more bearable. I'm still leaning towards an all-electric home, but I wouldn't build it without a Tesla Powerwall or a similar battery backup. Let me know what you think about all-electric homes in the comments below. Also, let me know if you owned or lived in one of those medallion homes. I'll link my Patreon page in the description if you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.